Hi, and welcome to our C3 Fireside Chat. I am Selena Isaac, the Chief Operating Officer here at Conductor. Today, I am super excited to be joined by Crispin Sheridan, the VP of Digital and Social Optimization at SAP. Hi, Crispin. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Selena, and hello, everyone, for C3. I'm uh, sorry we're not all together in New York City in the years past, but one day we will be. Well, you have a, a beautiful backdrop there. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yes, yes I, uh, I made the decision uh, two years ago um, to move down here. Um, we moved here, uh, yes, in June of 2019 to Miami Beach. Very good timing. <laughs> Very good timing. Yeah. So you have been at SAP for more than two decades and have really been managing SEO from day one. Um, today, we are actually here to talk about your journey over those years at SAP and how you and your team have been able to build a really, I would say, super advanced organic marketing program that spans across SEO, content, and web teams. And I want to be clear before getting into it that SEO is just one piece of the um, the puzzle when it comes to scaling a program. Um, organic marketing is really a team effort that requires collaboration between everyone involved in your website. And that's why we're so excited to have you join us um, here today and tell us how you got to building such an incredible program at SAP. So before we jump into the meat of the conversation, I want to give the audience here some context. Um, when you first started um, on your journey at SAP, you were actually responsible for all of search, digital, um, organic, and paid. What led you and, and SAP to completely focus um, your career on, on SEO? Well, thank you, Selena. Um, so when I joined SAP, it was actually 1998, uh, the last millennium um, in Toronto. And uh, at the time I joined the web team, it was it was the technical team responsible for the website, and there was no marketing organization, and it was apparent, I think, to, to them and to me that not only did we have to have the website up, running, creative was right, content was right, but it had to do something, it had to produce, it had to perform. So at the beginning, uh, there were no digital teams, there were no... Uh, members in the paid media team, in uh, social media, in organic search. Uh, it was right at the beginning, it was just me at that time, 2001, about uh, 98 to 2001. And the, the, the growth of the team that I, that I worked with really followed the growth of digital marketing, uh, particularly search engine marketing um, over the, the beginning of, of this millennium. Um, so we grew up from starting with some paid search uh, AdWords campaigns. Uh, you and I, Selena, worked on that uh, in previous uh, roles and incarnations uh, back in 2002, um, when at the time I said to my boss, hey, uh, can I have some money to, to spend on this AdWords thing with Google? Uh, I think we can drive some great traffic and generate some sales leads. And my boss at the time said, why would we use Google? Isn't that for researching digital cameras and you know, looking for the time of a movie. And I said, you'd be surprised how many people are searching for HR software, for example. Uh, and he was surprised and the rest of the executive was very surprised. And we did that test. Um, we drove people, I think at the very beginning, right to just some product pages on .com. We didn't have any campaign landing pages, but it was successful. And we were able to track those leads and inquiries that came from it. And we phoned every single country lead generation manager and said, what happened to this lead that was generated from, from AdWords? And within a short period of time, we had feedback and we were able to report on money spent, uh, traffic driven, registrations received, leads generated, closed business. And um, at the time, I took that first report to another executive and said, look at this, it's fantastic. You know, we can, we can actually relate our work to, to driving revenue from the business. And uh, at the time, no other team in marketing was able to do that. Um, and uh, I was sort of told, well, you know, keep that to yourself because no one else can, can make that claim or statement. But instead, we actually turned into a performance organization uh, and the executives at SAP realized this was important. And today, everybody has lead generation related targets in addition to everything else that they do. And the company is behind generating sales leads uh, through whatever tactic. Um, we grew from paid search to include organic search. We built the test lab to do A-B and multivariate testing. 
Uh, we introduced social media to SAP that then split off and has an entire team around it as well today. Uh, we went into the area of digital cross-channel attribution to really understand the impact of every channel on sales. Um, so the team grew and grew and grew, and we were essentially always the optimization team, performance and optimization. How do we improve what's already there? And uh, at the time and today, it just realized I realized that the organic search opportunity was the biggest opportunity, not only because it's the largest driver of traffic for us today, 72% of all of our web traffic globally across all our domains comes from organic search, uh, but also that it's going to be the area of maximum uh, growth in opportunity. So you can only scale paid media so far um, with budgets. You can only scale social so far um, with organic search. You know, I don't know if you can ever tap into all of the opportunity, um, but we realized that you know, it was almost job security. Like this thing, SEO, organic search, is going to be the main driver of traffic and opportunity and business results for the company for decades to come. And so we, we focused in on SEO and it's been very successful. That is such amazing foresight so long ago to have had um, with organic marketing and, and to just realize that many people don't see that for a really, really long time. So, so kudos to you there. If you flash back though to, you know, back right when you, when you started the SEO program and the SEO team, you know, what, how is it, how was SEO perceived at SAP? Did people know about it? Um, was it, was there big awareness about it? Was everyone always thinking about it like you did that this is such a massive opportunity? No, <laughs> in a word. Um, so in the early days, most people in marketing, particularly people in content marketing or people who owned content that, that was published to the web, um, their KPIs were to publish that content. Once it was published, job done. You know, no, more, no more need to, to do anything with it. Uh, what we brought to the table was, well, is that content performing? Is it the right content? Have we produced the, this piece of content in the context of understanding what people are pulling from us, are demanding? What are people searching for? Is this all this content we're producing meeting that need? Uh, and in many cases, it was a case that not all of that content was being consumed. A lot of it was getting very little traffic. Uh, a lot of it was, was uh, even when you look at localization into local language, a lot of it wasn't being demanded in local language. In many countries, uh, they do use English, particularly for some of the acronyms, um, like supply chain management, SCM, ERP, all of those, those things. Uh, so understanding where those hotspots in what people were searching for could inform the content we produced and how we optimized it really led us to be able to scale out and to approach the people that own that content and say, well, wouldn't you like to be able to say to your boss, not only did I produce that content and published it, but it performed. It got this many views. It generated this many sales leads. Um, and early on, people, some people took to that and agreed with it and came on board. But many people were like, nah, it's, it's extra work. I'm not going to get incentivized for it, uh, you know, making my, my day more difficult. Uh, but over time, um, we were able to turn around the organization and make it a performance-driven organization in marketing here at SAP. That's amazing. Um, at Conductor, we have actually worked with thousands of brands and we spent a lot of time trying to understand how companies mature their program, right? How do we, how do they get from, you know, that, that state of, like you talked about, you know, conceptual and, and tactical, um, all the way to more foundational, strategic and transformational. And those are the kind of five stages that we, we've noticed that companies go through. And as you describe when you, when you started, it really sounded like this very tactical state, being very reactive to the changes, wanting to just protect, you know, what you had in organic marketing, um, to now just being much more strategic and, and coordinated. So let's talk about your, um, you know, let's talk about the state now and, and what's next for you guys. The state now I think is, is so much better. Uh, we passed a pivot point probably, um, eight, eight, nine years ago where instead of knocking on all the doors and hoping people would say, okay, I, I'll make some time for you. I'll do three versions of my landing page so we can do some testing or I'll create some more content that's informed by query volumes that we're trying to tap into. And, you know, those, those people, as I say, you know, there were some incentivized people who really, you know, were very good to work with, but there were a lot of people for whom this, this didn't make sense. Um, but now that the whole organization and the whole company really is behind lead generation, uh, and demand-driven uh, marketing, uh, but also everything we do around awareness and, and, and the brand. 
but because everyone's more on the same page, it's much easier uh, to have a fully functioning organic marketing approach. Um, because it's not just organic search, it's not just SEO as we thought of it in the old days, the 10 blue links. Um, it's, it's really, how do we internalize this outside in approach, the voice of the customer, the mindset of the customer, what are they typing into Google or other engines? What shows up in front of them? Does it have an instant uh, mental connection? Uh, there's a book called Don't Make Me Think, which has driven um, a lot of my work over the 20 years. Um, and it's really about getting that gestalt, that click between, oh, I see it, I get it. It's exactly what I'm looking for. This relates to what I searched on. This content is what I needed. Yes, okay, now I understand this. I want to talk to a salesperson. Having that consistency through the marketing process, the user experience uh, process, uh, the journey, so to speak, um, is, is really important. And if you have a disconnect anywhere along that journey, you're going to have a leaky bucket, a leaky funnel, uh, and you won't be performing as optimally as you could be. I would love to, to dig into your journey um, from, from then until now in even more detail. You know, a lot of folks here in the room are probably somewhere along that journey um, that you've already gone through and you have a great deal of, of wisdom and experience. And I'm sure you've made a lot of mistakes along the way and you can help us kind of guide everyone in the right direction. But, you know, looking back, uh, what investments did you make into you know, team collaboration, education, people, um, you know, what, what was, what did that look like, um, you know, in your, in your overall journey? We realized early on that uh, a big key to being successful was having people throughout the content supply chain, understanding uh, organic marketing best practices, understanding topics and keywords the way we did, understanding that we're trying to tap into something that's already sitting there, this, this resource, this, this demand. And how do we tap into that? Um, so we put together a training and education program. Uh, we, we increased our footprint in the company. Uh, we went to speak on as many conference calls as possible to explain what SEO is and what search is, how to get the best out of search. Um, remember, this was at the time when, you know, back in the early noughts, Google was still relatively new. Um, and uh, it, it was a big education process. Luckily, just use the word Google or Facebook and social media and, and the room was full, you know, didn't have a problem getting people interested in uh, this topic. Um, but what was the challenge was getting people to then invest and say, okay, yeah, this is fun. This is interesting, you know, hot new word or topic. Um, but how do you get people to then say, okay, how does that relate to my work? What skills do I need to actually learn and develop? What platforms do I need to understand to be able to use? Uh, and we needed to do that at scale, you know, across the company with, you know, more than 200,000 uh, employees worldwide. If you look at all of the, the acquired brands that we have as well, acquired companies, um, and essentially working as a center of excellence was the only way for us to go. We're a small team. We started off, it was just me. Right now, it's about seven of us uh, who are focused on SEO. Um, and we need to do that as a center of excellence but to be able to bring that training to all of those people worldwide, to hundreds of people in, in you know, tons of languages across the globe, uh, all product areas, all industry areas, all company sizes, uh, from training up to full cloud ERP uh, platforms, et cetera. Um, it, it's, it's a massive data cube in five or six directions, uh, let alone three dimensions. Um, and that training was, was really important. We had to make it enticing. We had guest speakers. We, uh, we did it as kind of a road show. You know, um, I think even in some of the early days, we had music at the beginning as we introduced people. Um, we kind of tried to make it fun and retain that, that edginess to it. Uh, but also, once people began to understand what we were doing, it was then how do they become part of it? Um, so providing the, uh, the qualification training, for example, conductor certification. Uh, you know, we have more than 400 people uh, who are conductor users across SAP across the world. Um, and that's, that's fantastic, but it, it's, it, it, it can grow even further. Um, what we then did was say, okay, we've given you the understanding of what we're trying to achieve. We've given you the tools. Uh, we've, we've looked into the data. Now, how do you keep that going? How does that become a, a, a sustaining process? And one of the things we did was to introduce office hours, which was instead of a one hour training call, and, you know, where people would sit back and listen, it was one hour, 
with no agenda. And everyone had to lean in and go, well, okay, I'm having a problem with this. You know, what do I do about not being able to rank for X in, in this country? And we would uh, literally you know, have 30, 40 people on the phone every week. And people would listen to other people's questions. We made sure that it was a very safe environment, no stupid questions, you know. Uh, what's the difference between paid and organic search? I got that one quite a lot. You know, to me, it's pretty obvious and it has been. But today, there are still people who, you know, you point it out on the screen that, oh, that's what that thing is at the top of the Google search results. That's a paid ad. This isn't, uh, you know, it's not always been as obvious. So let the data do the talking. Let people ask questions. Let them understand it and participate in those, in those uh, approaches, developing those practices and uh, process changes. Uh, and then they're invested in it, and then you get a, you end up with a high-performing organization uh, that's really getting the most out of organic marketing. I really love the idea of office hours. You know, just hit them right when they've got the questions and they're actually working through it and doing something about it. That's a great, great idea. Um, you also mentioned having 400 marketers in Conductor. That has to mean a great deal of process improvement and process change. What is the right organic marketing process and how do you inspire it? How do you get SEO a part of that process? First, you have to get, I think, the executives in your organization to understand what we're talking about here, which is essentially a, a huge asset. Uh, the website, the web presence, our content, your content for whatever company you're, you're working with, um, that is an asset that not only needs to be nurtured uh, like a garden, um, but also strategized and planned around. You know, it's it's not something you can just sit there, throw it in a cupboard and it's gonna be, you know, the, the retirement funds are gonna be worth X, you know, at the end of the day. Um, you have to go in and tend that garden. When you have acquired brands and you bring a new garden into the picture, you can't just throw all the trees and shrubs into the same garden and expect it to look nice or to, to, to function as a garden. You need to redesign it and, and replan it. And we've had a project underway for many years called One Digital Experience, which is how do we look at all of these different digital experiences with different domains across the world, different languages, et cetera, and try to come up to one approach, one digital experience from the perspective of the customer. Where are they going to go? What are they going to look for? How are they going to find it? How do you meet their informational needs to the point where they and all of the people around them connected with a potential software purchase uh, or an engagement for SAP are all going to be able to get their knowledge to the same level needed to make a decision like that and to put our best foot forward. So uh, it, it's, it's a multidimensional um, activity and, uh, you know, having that asset which is your content and understanding it as an asset and that needs to be nurtured is a very important first step. Like I've always said, you know, you don't stop going to the gym after you get a six pack. Uh, that's the best way to lose one is to stop going to the gym. Um, so you have to keep at it uh, like a relationship or a garden. You have to keep working at it and uh, having a future proofed program, having this ongoing training component, having people on the team looking out for new technologies, new approaches, uh, heads up, you know, over the horizon rather than head, just heads down onto today's web page uh, is really important. You have to have that breadth to have a sustainable program. That's great. Um, did you get much resistance from teams who didn't want to adopt the technology or the workflow that you put in place? How did you overcome that? So certainly with anything in life, um, you're going to get uh, resistance, uh, particularly to new ideas. Um, I think the modern uh, definition of a Luddite is quite different to what it used to be in the old days. You know, it was originally people who didn't want uh, equipment used in the manufacture of, of, uh, of clothing, you know, uh, wool, wool uh, what are they called? Things that develop wool and cotton and all of those things. So people would come in and smash the looms. They literally would break up the equipment because they didn't want progress. They, they thought that would affect jobs. We know today that you have to lead with that. You, you have to retrain uh, your teams, the your organizations, the population, uh, in order to stay ahead of the curve and for, have, for people to be able to do what's, what's really valuable. So when we met with resistance, we always went back to our, our basics, which was explain, train, um, and show people what it is we're doing, why we're doing it, the benefits that can come from doing it, how they can get involved and do it, how they can look like a hero uh, and a superstar, um, by actually showing that their content really performs and generates sales for the company, generates true business value rather than checkbox I published uh, this PDF or that PDF. Having a, a 
you know, a, a process across the globe that's going to work for everyone uh, is, is very difficult. Um, and you have to have these basic sort of building blocks, these basic levels of understanding and the tool set, the foundational tools like Conductor and the functionality and Conductor of the, of the brief. Um, so the brief that Conductor gives us, we use it across the marketing organization, across all of the different teams that touch content, uh, touch different uh, digital marketing channels. And it brings everyone to the point of understanding a baseline. The next step is the research. So uh, we're blessed to have um, uh, budgets to work with agencies and partners like you guys uh, in order to get the best out of, out of our content uh, and the best results. And it's, it's very important for us to know that each person we work with is ultimately coming on board, becoming part of that team. And they're going to feel like, like part of the team and part of the family, and they're going to become an advocate in their own area. Uh, you can only do that as a center of excellence unless you have a couple of hundred employees. Uh, I know seven for SEO is, is, is quite luxurious. Uh, we're very lucky to have that. But it is, it is necessary that enough resources be allocated to these types of projects uh, to have the impact that we can have in, in terms of the, of the business results. Yeah, we talk about that as having a culture of SEO so that, you know, a lot of people are actually working on SEO and incorporating SEO into their jobs because it is it, it the data that it can provide can really enhance everything from how you create, how you optimize content, how you name your products, how you talk about your products and services. And it really does become a, a great focal point and that really becoming the transformative state of organic marketing is when you are able to do that as an organization. So thank you, Crispin, for sharing all of your knowledge and your wisdom. Um, and thank you all for, for joining us today. Um, we wish you all the best and stay tuned for more. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and go SEO, go C3. Happy to be with you.